Good day, students. My name is Mrs. Comfort Amotara. I'll be your biology teacher for today's lesson. And the topic is the organ of the hearing and balance. The organ of the hearing and balance. Learning objectives. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to explain the three distinct parts of the ear, describe how hearing occur, discuss the organ of balance, state the care of the ear and ear defects. The organ of hearing and balance. Invertebrates, the two ears perform the function of hearing and balancing. The ear of man is located in the temporal bone on the skull. The ear has three distinct parts, namely the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear. The outer ear, this consists of the pinna and outer ear tube or auditory canal called the external auditory meatus and the ear drum or tympanum is made up of cartilage covered by skin. It collects sound waves and directs them along the external auditory meatus to the tympanic membrane that is ear drum. It also detects the direction of sound waves. The auditory meatus is a narrow passage which contains fine hairs and wax producing glands. The wax produced prevents entry of insects, germs, and dust into the air. The tympanum is a thin tissue which separates the outer ear from the middle ear. It pulsates when sound waves strike it. Now, the middle ear. This is a small ear filled chamber buried in the skull. It contains Three tiny bones called ossicles that articulate with one another and form a bridge across the middle ear held in place by muscles. The ossicles include one, the malleus or armor, which is attached to the same panel eardrum. Two, the incus or hanvu which connects the malleus at the one end by a hinge joint to the strips at the other end by a ball and socket joint. Three, the staves or stirrup which fits into the inner ear at a membrane called the oval wind or venestra ovalis. The articles transmit vibrations across the tympanic membrane to the oval window. They also magnify the pressure on the oval window about 30 times. A second opening covered by a membrane, the round window connects the middle ear with the inner ear. The middle ear is air filled and connected to the nasal pharynx by a narrow tube called eustachian tube. The tube allows ear from the mouth to enter the middle ear 
and leave the middle ear. It opens during yarning and helps to equalize ear pressure or both sides of the eardrum. This helps prevent the bursting of the eardrum. We shall be right back after a short break. You are welcome back. Uh, as I was saying, it opens during yarning and helps to equalize air pressure on both sides of the eardrum. This helps prevent the bursting of the eardrum. However, infection may travel from the throat and nose to the middle ear through this tube. Now, the inner ear. The organs of hearing and balance are found in the inner ear. It consists of a system of bony canals. That is the bony labyrinth filled with a fluid called the perilymph. Within this system of canals is another system of membranous channels or the membranous labyrinth filled with fluid called the endolymph. The two systems contain one, the cochlea, which is the organ of hearing, two, the semicircular canals together with the utricle and circle which are concerned with the balance. Hearing. Hearing occurs as follows. One, the pinna in each ear collects sound waves. Two, the sound waves passes through the external auditory meatus, strike the tympanum and make it vibrate. Three, the vibrations are transmitted across three ossicles of the middle ear. Four, in the middle ear, the vibrations are magnified about 30 times. Five, vibrations of the oval window cause vibration in the round window and the perilymph of the inner ear. Six, the perilymph in turn causes the endolymph to vibrate. Seven, vibration in the endolymph of the cochlea stimulates its sensory cells to generate nervous impulses. And lastly, the nervous impulses are transmitted by the auditory nerve to the brain, which interprets the pitch, quality, and loudness of sounds. And thus, hearing takes place. Now let's look at the organs of balance. The organs of balance are the semicircular canals. These are connected to the sac-like utricle and circle. Two of the three semicircular canals are vertical, while the third is horizontal. The planes of the canals are at right angles. Each seminar canal has a swollen, swollen base called ampulla, which contains sensory cells. Within each ampulla is the cupula, 
which is a gelatinous structure that can sway from side to side by the movement of the end limb. At the base of the cupola, there are sensory cells which have hair like projections stretching into the cupola. These sensory cells, which are known as mechanoreceptors, synapse with sensory neurons that form part of the auditory nerve, which shall continue after short break. You are welcome back. The utricle and circle have gelatinous plates with chalky granules called macula in their basal walls. At the base of each plate are mechanoreceptors which snaps with the sensory neurons that form part of the auditory nerve. Now, the cochlea is a spirally coiled tube partitioned into three membranous longitudinal canals. The outer canals are filled with perilymph, while the middle canal is filled with endolymph. The middle canal has thousands of mechanoreceptors along its length, which snaps with sensory neurons that are part of the auditory nerve. The mechanoreceptors are grouped into organs of cartilage. Organs of cartilage. Each organ of cartilage has basilar and tectorial membranes which vibrate by the movement of fluid in the canals. When the head is moved horizontally or vertically, such as when a person twists around in an upright position or bends the head forward, backward or sideways, the movement push the cupola in the ampulla of the affected semicircular canal. That is, horizontal movements affect horizontal canals, while vertical movements affect vertical canals. The endolymph moves in opposite direction to the movement of the head. The cupola therefore moves in the same direction as the endolymph. The movement of the cupola stimulates the mechanoreceptors to send half nervous impulses to the brain through the auditory nerve. In response, the brain sends out motor impulses to the appropriate muscles to react in a way as to maintain the balance of the body in the new position. The sensory ears of the mucula within the utricle as circle respond to gravity when the head is moved vertically or horizontally. The displacement of the chalky granules bend the ears under the gelatinous plates, which indicates which initiates impulses to the brain through the vestibular nerve that is part of the auditory nerve. Now, care of the mammalian ear. 1. Avoid the use of sharp or pointed objects in cleaning or scratching the ear. 2. Seek prompt and appropriate medical attention if there is an ache or a discharge from the ear. 
Three, avoid inserting dirty fingers into the ear or else the ear may become infected by bacteria. Four, workers in noisy environment should wear earmuffs to prevent excessive and prolonged exposure to noise which may cause deafness. 5. Remove the wax in the air corner regularly and with, with a soft cutting wool. And lastly, avoid receiving blows to the side of the air house. The eardrum may burst. Ear defects. The major ear defect is deafness, which may be partial, or temporary, or permanent. People with defects in the outer or middle ear may be aided with earphones. Those with defects in the inner ear may be helped with an implanted receiver. However, some have total deafness and may need to learn sign language and how to read lips. Now, students, I want you to answer the following questions. One, describe the structure of the air. Two, briefly discuss how the air carries out its functions of hearing and balance. Assignments, make a large world-labeled diagram of the mammalian ear. Yeah.